Hey everybody, it's Chili here. Let's take a look at the homework for tutorial 7. I instructed you to upgrade the SNEC game to bring it into the future with uh, STID Vector. Now you might think, well that's going to be easy, we'll just replace this array here with a vector, make a couple changes, add some pushback, add some range-based for loops and we're done. But it's a little more involved than that, we'll have to change the segment as well, because right now the way segment works is it's made to be default constructing every segment and then we call init head and init body to initialize them. And but with the vector we are going to be instead of constructing all the segments ahead of time and then initializing them with a function we are going to be constructing them on the go as we need them. So we don't need these init functions. What we do need is constructors and we can get rid of our default constructor. So all we can do is take these guys, give them the name segment, get rid of this because say, you know, constructors don't have return values, and now they are constructors. Uh, now we want to go into here, look at where the compiler is pissing its, uh, pissing its pants, and we'll get rid of that stuff, copy this segment, put it in here, put it in here, and everyone should be happy. That's that part done. Second part is, of course, we've got to now modify snake. So it's going to have a vector, so we need to include, include, vector. Beautiful. Now in here we want a std vector of segments, get rid of that. And we don't need this anymore. And now we don't need to keep track of the maximum number because, you know, it doesn't matter. This vector can grow pretty goddamn big indeed. We don't need to keep track of the number segments that is kept track of in the vector. Everything is a lot cleaner now. We're, we're living in a brave new future. So, now here is one part that is gonna be a bit different. So in the original, we default construct all the segments, then we initialize all their colors up front. But now we're not going to have that. We can't initialize the colors because they won't be constructed until they're needed. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to keep track of the sequence of colors, where we are in the color sequence, and we use that every time we push a new segment into the vector. So let me just... Call, we're going to comment that out. We're going to delete this. It's not needed. Now we're going to need uh, this array here and we're going to need this number they will help us out so we're going to go control x toggle and we'll just put them in here with the other color bullshit so obviously if it's a member it's got to be static if it's going to be const expression so static const expression and here's all our color bullshit all our color constants toggle header code file now knit head is not going to be a thing anymore. Instead, what we are going to do is we're just going to call segments dot in place back, and we'll call the constructor for the head segment, which takes a location. And there you go. We'll deal with this guy in a second. Now, what we want to do next? Move by. Now, normally, I what I would say is right awesome let's use a range based for loop but this one is looping backwards through the segments right uh, move of a moving of a snack means you move all of the body segments to the segment in front of it and then you move the head to the destination um, so you got to start from the tail so we can't do a range based for loop here let's just replace end segments with segments dot size and that will fix this segment zero this would work but let's go segments dot front because i find it sexier that is my fetish don't kink shame me now here move and grow by so here is where the growing happens and uh we don't have to test end segments and end segments max that's all happen that all happens inside of the vector but what we do have to do is in place a new segment into the vector so we'll go segments dot in place and now we got to give it a color for the body and this is where this code comes in handy so we'll take this body colors and we're gonna need an I the index uh, our current position in the body color uh, sequence so let's go 
Uh, let me think here. Because we can actually just use the count of segments as the position in the sequence. That wouldn't be a problem, would it? Because it increases by one every time, so it's going to cycle through these colors. So we don't actually need uh, a, an extra variable for that. So let's go um, segments dot size. And we'll mod that by n body colors to bring it within the range of this uh, an array. And we'll use that to get the color that we're going to do for segments. Now in place, it's not in place, it's in place back. So let's call in place back. And then we move. Beautiful. Now this one we can do a range based for loop. Since we're not modifying the segment, we'll go constant, auto, because I'm lazy, s in segments. And then here we just go s.draw, and that'll draw each segment onto the board. Uh, let's get rid of that. Here, this one is, uh, it's intile except n. So this does everything except test the end element, so we can't use a range based for loop. What we can do is go segments.size. It's not how you spell size. And that'll be that. What we got is in tile. This one is a range based for loop. It is also const fodder. So we'll just copy this, paste it in here, replace this with an S, and we're good to go. What is what is next? Uh, I believe that is actually it. We have actually done it. Uh, we don't need this anymore, obviously. Get rid of that. We'll build. Uh, warning, signed, unsigned, mismatch will go into here. So this is an int, and segments.size returns a type that's called size underscore t. It's basically an unsigned int. So if we just change this to size t, which is basically unsigned int, yeah, I see type def, unsigned int, size t, then this will get rid of our uh, little warning there. Beautiful. Now, I hope you guys can appreciate the beauty of what just happened here because we basically took all the guts of SNCC, we rearranged them, but guess what? We never had to touch anything outside of the SNCC class. Even though SNCC has changed a lot inside, all of the outside code interfaces with it exactly the same as it did before. And the reason why this is, is the power of encapsulation putting all of our data members and shit private and accessing through interface functions. This is how it's done, and this is why it's done this way. Because it's fucking sweet. Let's run it. Uh, now, my config file is fucked up from the last video, so we can fix that. Uh, and what I want to do is, it's annoying to have to, you know, right click here and go open file and folder and find it every single time I want to mess around with the config file. We're going to go project, new filter, let's just call this one uh, configs, then we will get the engine settings.txt, put that in here, and now whenever we want to do settings we can just click on this. So these settings are not acceptable, let's go, let's try this, alright, there we go, that seems fine I guess, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, it seems to be working. Nothing is crashing. The game is running as intended. Let's uh, let's keep moving. Oh, I should probably get some of these guys. Well, now we're going way too fast. Bam. Bam. Oh, okay, we didn't make it, but it looks like the game is working fine. So, that's part one done. Now, um, I mean, this is the main thing we'd want to change with Vector. But let's change something else. Let me just put a commit in here. So we'll make this commit. Now, basically... Vector is the shit, and we can replace most, if not all, of our arrays with vectors. So, definitely anytime we got anything that's dynamic, we want to use vector. So what do you know that else that isn't dynamic in here? Well, the board is dynamic, right? We made that change in the, in the homework from the previous video. So let's toggle header code file, cell contents, pointer contents. No, no, no. You gotta be, you gotta get into the 21st century, my friend. Vector. We're living in the future now. Cell contents. So std vector cell contents contents not equal to null pointer. So we do this toggle header code file. Now uh, here we are creating contents with width times height. So all we got to do 
So we do that, we give it a size, and we can also specify a default value. So let's put in there, cell contents empty. Getting two birds stoned at once. And that's a beautiful thing. Second thing is, we don't need a destructor anymore because now all of our members take care of their destruction themselves. I mean, they're all simple except for uh, this vector. And the vector knows how to wipe its own ass, so we don't have to do that for it, which means we don't have to do that. Which means we also don't have to worry about uh, these copy members. They will work perfectly. Or if we don't use them, that's fine too, but... Uh, Rule of three, right? If we're not going to implement uh, all of them, then let's implement none of them. That's rule of zero, actually. Uh, so yeah, we can rule of zero this motherfucker and not implement shit and it'll all just work. And now if we ever wanted to copy a board, it would just work now. Although I don't anticipate that being the case. Let's build it. And we can see the game is working fine. We may have changed it, uh, you know, a bit under the hood, but the actual interface remains untarnished here. Could probably use actually a little more poison in this one. Can't freaking get that mother fucking. Ah, there we go. Yeah, beautiful. Let's see how much more I can get. No, no. Ah, oh, did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Oh, man. I'm, I'm a fucking stick master. Okay. Never mind. All right. So, uh, yeah, that is that. And let's let's add that as a commit. All right. Now, there's one last thing I want to take care of. It's been bothering me for quite a while. It has nothing to do with the homework assignment itself. But um, basically, moving your snake. That's fine. I can move forward. I can move backwards, up and down. Length of two. That's fine. Let's say I'm moving left. I can move right left right but now if i get one larger and i move left i just tried to move right commit suicide right because we try to move right but we bump right into ourselves and die and this is the thing i want to prevent because it's dumb and i don't know it just seems like a dumb uh, mistake that you wouldn't want to allow the user to make it would be a very annoying way to lose the game so how do we do that well basically if we go into game.cpp here we've got our uh, our control handling, keyboard input. And what we want to do is, for example, if we are moving to the right, so if delta lock is 1, 0, and then the, the user presses left, we want to ignore that. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, rename these guys here. So we determine the input key and then we create a constant new delta lock based on that. Now, what we want to do is we want to check to see if delta location is not equal to the opposite of new delta location. So if they are not the opposite directions, if delta location and new delta location are not opposites, then we can set delta location equal to new delta. But if they are opposites, we just want to ignore that input. Now, we don't have an operator for this. We don't have the negation operator for location, but we can add one pretty damn easily. So the negation operator is going to return a new location. And we go operator, negative, it's unary, so it doesn't take any parameters, but it doesn't modify the object, so it can be const. Now we gotta do is we're gonna return a new location and we can use aggregate initialization. Even though we don't have a constructor that takes uh, X and Y, aggregate initialization allows us to do construct with the, uh, the curly braces and we just do negative X, negative Y. And there you go, we've got the uh, negation operator and that'll give us the opposite of the location. Now we also want a not equals operator for bool. So let's just put this one not equals. Don't don't even start with me. There we go. And all we got to do here is we can define that in terms of our equals. So return not star this is equal to right hand side. So these two operators will enable us to do this do this thing, and then we just got to do that the same for this one, for this one, and for this one. And that is fine. Uh, it should work. Except for one problem. 
now we can't move in the opposite direction. So I can move down, right, less, I can go right, up, left, but if I try to go right here, it doesn't work. So, to fix that, we just gotta add a little extra condition in here. So if delta lock is not equal to the opposite of new delta lock, or if uh, snack dot uh, get length, and there is no get length function, so let's add get length to snack. We'll go to snake dot h, and uh, we'll go int get length const definition, and here we'll go return. That's not what I want. Return segments dot size. And that'll allow us to get the length. Now we can go into game.cpp. So snack.get length is less than two. So if it's less than two, then we can allow moving in the opposite direction. Should actually be less than or equal to two, right? Because we want to obviously include two. That was the whole point of this bullshit. Now I suppose it would help if I actually did it for all of the directions now, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay. So we'll do that, we'll run it. Now we can move this way, if I opposite direction I can move, I can switch it up. Can do it for length of two, length of three, can no longer do it. We are now prevented from committing suicide. Well, we can still commit suicide, we just gotta be a little more tricky about it. So we'll commit that motherfucker and snake game is getting better and better all the time. Now one last problem that has come to my attention is that if we go off the screen, we get a debug assertion failed, and that should not be happening, so let's retry. Let's break, and let's do something. Get contents, uh, location negative one, get contents. So, we are trying to call get contents when we are already off the screen, when we're at negative one. That shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. So, what is happening here? Compose frame update model. Uh, so what we do here is, let me see here, snack move counter, snack move. So snack dot get next head location contents, get contents, snack move counter. So next head location is going to be off the board and then we're going to try to get contents from there, but that's no good. We were going to accessing memory outside of our vector. So what we want to do is we want to prevent that. So basically what we want to do is if next is already outside of the board, we don't want to do board.getContents next. Now I'm going to show you, for you guys watching the, uh, the solution videos here, I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't use it that often in my code, but sometimes it's a little nice. It's called ternary operator. So what ternary operator does, it allows you to uh, selectively evaluate two, one of two expressions depending on a boolean value. So what we can do is we can do um, so if so content is equal to so brd dot is inside board next. So there is the controlling uh, boolean. Question mark tells us we want a ternary operation. Now the first thing is if it is true, it will evaluate the first expression. So if is inside board, then it's going to evaluate get contents, and that value is going to be stored into contents here. But if it's false, it will evaluate the second thing, the thing after this colon, which is going to be, I guess, just um, board cell contents. Uh, I don't know, empty. It doesn't really matter because if if it's outside of the board, then it's gonna fail this and it's never, it's not gonna check contents anyways. Uh, so, here, this ternary operator will prevent this from being called if this returns false. And uh, let's just, I don't know, let's do that. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so this should fix our problem. And yeah, let's go off the board. No problem. No uh, no assertions. Everything's fine. We'll commit that, and there you go. There's the homework. And it's beautiful. Works. Two things I want you to take away from this. Number one, vectors are the shit. Number two, encapsulation is the shit. See you soon with some more C++.